Okay, so we're we're looking at a couple of smallish diamonds I'm playing with today. And uh, it, there's an interesting phenomenon about diamond because it's made out of carbon. Okay, and carbon populations, all carbon populations, including our bodies, um, have all three isotopes of carbon. Okay, so um, that means that there's carbon-12, which is more common on the surface, carbon-13 in diamonds, and carbon-14, the radioactive isotope of carbon. Carbon-13 um, forms deep in the ground, and it's got double-double uh, covalent bonds, which is why diamonds are so clear okay. and the color in diamonds is unlike the, uh, the um, colors in in uh, other rocks like rubies and sapphires for instance um, is not because of some contamination within the crystal structure um, like rubies and sapphires have different metals in the uh, planes of cleavage and the interstitial sites. So uh, mine have hemp seed oil, but it's pretty clear. So it's not uh, causing any uh, color. What, uh, and in fact, these are just clear, okay? The color is caused because it has planes of cleavage that are half the size of this particular shade of blue uh, or purple and the deeper they form the um, the closer those planes of cleavage are because the unit cell of the the carbon atom is uh, um, squeezed together more so so the purple ones come out first, way deep in the ground. Um, and, and then, you know, as it's coming up uh, and the mix cools and the pressure relieves a little bit because it's higher up in the ground, um, and these are floating in the, in the molten rock, right? They, they, they uh, precipitate out of molten rock and they float on top of it because they're just carbon. And all those metals and stuff that, that come up to the surface um, keep them buoyant and, you know, all the way up. And, and we find them in volcanic ash and in uh, igneous rock. So, uh, and mine are dirty because I've been really sick and uh, I don't, have time to take care of my stuff a lot of times, so I just throw them in boxes. Um, but it's not a problem because they don't get scratched or anything. They're, they're very, 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 very hard. Okay, so here's the, the thing. I have a red laser here. Bump. And when I shine it through this one, it gets uh, the whole thing begins to fluoresce at this particular shade of red. Okay, and that's because of the carbon-14 in there. The carbon-14 is excited and starts giving off electrons at the exact wavelength of the light that's exciting it. Blue diamonds don't do that. And this is a diamond, for sure. For sure, for sure. I, I checked just before I started this video, so I didn't get, like, embarrassed, you know. But it does, the, the closeness... Now, this one's really clear, and it's kind of got a pinkish tint to it. So, um, or, you know, lavender or something, but kind of pinkish. Um, so it's responding to the red light. This one doesn't. Because the planes of cleavage are smaller 
than the wavelengths of my red laser. So the red, red light goes through more than one plane of cleavage. Hang on. Schnitzel, you can come up, man. Come on up. Come on. You can come up, buddy. Schnitzel dog goodo. Come on now. How come my camera doesn't focus? Okay, Schnitz. Up, Simba. Up. Come on. Up. Arriba. Up, up, up. Come on. Up. You can do it, buddy. Schnitzel. Okay, Schnitz. There you go. Okay, he was a very clever doggy. All right. Anyway, back to our video. So, the blue is too close together to respond to the red laser light. That's one of the ways I figured this stuff out. Damn, I hate flies. All right. And, and, you know, red laser light, this is uh, um, right up there by 700 nanometers. Um, so it's two times bigger than this. This is about uh, 400, almost two times. 390 is purple. 400 is blue, 550 is green, 600 is orange, yellow, and um, red is up around 700, and pink is, uh, pink is uh, um, up above the red. It's almost clear. Now, this has got kind of a, a lavender tint, but um, the fact that it responds to the, uh, hey, that it responds to the red laser tells me that it's pinkish rather than purplish. This is a way of measuring things because I know this wavelength. I know this wavelength, and I know diamonds have planes of cleavage, and I know that the that the planes of cleavage follow the pavilion, follow this uh, these angles here on the bottom, so they open outwards to catch the light. That's why diamonds sparkle around the periphery. Now, you, you know, here you can see right through to the bottom of the stone, all the sparkles and stuff happen around the periphery. And the blue secondary colors that you're seeing there, they are the um, beta emissions from the carbon-14 in the population of carbon atoms. Ditto here. This has lots and lots of them. The deeper they form, the more carbon-14 there is. Now, hold on. Okay, so here's a really nice blue diamond. And, and these are blue diamonds. Uh, the, the, this is um, 10 on the most scale of hardness. And so is this. And I know that because I can go like this and, uh, you know, push down a little bit. I'm not gouging it, but um, it does not, in fact, leave little circular scratches there. It, it, those are my thumb wiping off uh, hemp seed oil. Let's see if I can get the hemp seed oil off. Let's see if there's any circular scratches there. No, there aren't. 
and, and I did actually push down on that and stuff. So what we're seeing is like the structure of the stone and my hemp seed oil there. Um, but it also doesn't respond to red laser light because the laser light is bigger than the planes of cleavage passing through this diamond. Okay. And then um, the deeper they form, the closer those uh, planes of cleavage are and the more carbon-14 is in there. So, hold on. So I was learning about this stuff a long time ago, and I bought these uh, these cubic crystals, very nice one. And this one probably would have been an octahedron. Um, and my my boy Yoda is singing. He likes to sing when I take videos. Um, so anyway, it would probably be an octahedron, but uh, this growth phase here. Um, got cut short as it was floating up in the in the mix. Now watch, and, and it's kind of bluish or aqua greenish, but <laughs> it's got lots of uh, carbon fourteen in it, and, and it really <laughs> really lights up, man. I think we're running out of juice here. Anyway, it does definitely light up. Uh, and it's 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness. This would have been the bottom of an octahedron. See what I mean? Like a pyramid. And the other side was uh, kind of heading that way, but uh, decided to do something else. So, and, and there's the octahedron. See it? right there, and, and if it had stopped there, it would have been a nice octahedral crystal like uh, De Beers sells all the time. They have 2,000 criteria that grade their diamonds, and they don't sell stuff like this to people. Um, they, they think it's flawed. And, and it is, those are, you know, planes of cleavage in there, and you can see them, and, and in those little things to be yourself, you can't. Uh, and if you look, look through a loop, um, sometimes you see little bits and pieces in there, like, like this stuff. Um, but generally speaking, not, because they grade it out. They, they get rid of them, don't sell them. Okay? And, of course, they're little tiny things. But you know what? That's not like broken in there. It's not broken at all. It's a solid crystal of carbon. It has a melting point of 3,800 degrees Celsius. There, there, there's some information that says 3550 or something like that on the melting point of carbon, but that's the carbon-12 allotrope. Um, uh, and this is carbon-13, which has double, double co covalent bonds, um, which require the, the more bonding energy there is, the higher the enthalpy, the, the resistance to change. Um, and so this is about 3,800. Uh, and it's the first thing that precipitates out of molten rock. And so they're, they're not, uh, the color doesn't come from the mm, inclusions. It comes from the size of those planes of cleavage. And um, the light bounces inside a plane of cleavage. So it comes in, boom, like this, and boom, like this. Half that distance of this particular shade of blue or this particular shade of whatever it is, kind of greenish 
aqua something. Uh, you can't really see it in this light. Um, let's get some light on it. It's pretty. It, it's a pretty stone. Lots of rainbows in it. Look at that. That's what I get them for, man. I like the little rainbows. And this is uh, the Z-axis there. That's what we're looking at. And those are rainbows that are bouncing off the planes of cleavage. Uh, so it's like a thin film diffraction rather than a play of color like Opal has. Um, Oh, Schnitzel, you can come up, man. Please don't do that. So, anyway, the dog is having a field day, jumping up and down off the bed. Big fun. So, anyway, that's that's why I, um, this is how I learned about diamonds. By measuring them. We measure the universe with light because this is a known quantity that particular wavelength of light is a known quantity and so I can measure my diamonds with it and get accurate information And that is yet another test. I can use a green laser and a blue laser. Now, blue lasers will make them all light up. Schnitz, please come up, man. Come on, man. So we're going to measure a couple more here. Um, this is a, uh, an imitation rainbow diamond. And it's got the, the kind of colors of, uh, of thin film diffraction because it is. And somebody cut this in half. Uh, you can kind of see the, where they did it, right along the, the bottom. Um, when you look sideways through them, they don't actually have any color in them. And that, that's how you can tell the difference between the real ones and the and the imitation ones. And they kind of have purpley, greenish color instead of true uh, spectrum color. Okay, but it's a diamond. Okay, now here's a blue one that is, in fact, not a diamond. And doesn't light up at all. See what I mean? This is a, a sapphire. It's a really nice sapphire. And, um, see that? That's where I scratched it, doing scratch tests with diamonds. Um, and I don't know about these particular diamonds, but I checked them all, man. I checked them all. And, and it has a blue glow to it when you put the light on it, but it um, doesn't glow all by itself uh, like diamonds do. It's... Um, that blue glow will go away when I turn the light out. See what I mean? Now, diamonds kind of glow in any light. Harder to hold this one, maybe, but I'll put it over here in the dark. 
And uh, sure enough, it lights up all by itself because there's enough light to stimulate the carbon-14 in the crystal lattice. And light is how we measure the universe. 